shit. So the film itself, Bonded by Blood 2, is based on a true life book by Bernard O'Mahony um, called Essex Boys, The New Generation. So book number two is actually looking at a different story um, and it's about the aftermath of the Range Rover killings and it's about the young drug dealers that kind of fill the void after the Tucker Tate murders. Obviously Tate and Tucker and co cast a very long shadow in Essex and still do. I mean, you know, everywhere I go, I meet people that knew them or were in prison with them or drank with them or did this and you know most of it's bullshit but they are they are iconic gangland figures whatever way we look at it I mean you know the Essex boys are the 90s version of the craze. Um, it's a true life story that follows the murder of a young lad called Dean Boschel. Now there's a young man called Ricky Percival a drug dealer who's serving time um, for the murder but in Bernard's book he suggested that they, um, Damon Alvin who uh, turned supergrass to the police, basically stitched up Ricky Percival and did the murder himself. So George Russo plays Damon Alvin, uh, our lead character, and it was fantastic working with George. He's an actor after my own heart's a director, and he does a lot of research, and we spent a lot of time in rehearsals. Yeah, my name's George Russo. I'm playing Damon Alvin, and um, Damon is um, uh, he's vengeful, Vicious and uh, ambitious, and I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it just it just does. Very calculating guy. In fact, we based him on on on, on a fox. I looked at I looked at like the the urban street fox. You know, he'll, he'll he'll take what he can get. He'll scavenge whatever he can get. You know, he'll take a baby out the bedroom window, or or or, or he'll rummage through the through the rubbish. You know, so to speak. This is uh, Ben Porter. Bodyguard to the stars. Watch out for this one. Josh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the stars. Yeah. Josh Myers is one of the greatest actors to ever have on set. No matter how stressful um, anything is going, you can rely on Josh to make an inappropriate joke just before you're about to go for a take. So he had a fantastic energy and enthusiasm and just sense of humour and having a laugh. And that's really important when you're so stressed out. And sometimes between actors, there can be egos, but Josh really down to earth, really enthusiastic, and just put his entire heart into doing the Ricky Percival character. And was also very sensitive to the fact that Ricky is still in prison. Um, so he'd contact Ricky Percival's mum. So he was kind of sensitive around that. He didn't just want to do a stereotypical send up of a drug dealer. Um, so, you know, he treaded carefully. And like I say, his energy and enthusiasm was fantastic to work with. Uh, my name's Josh Myers and I play Ricky Percival. He's a bit of a uh, naughty geezer, a bit of a chap. Um, I think in real life, apparently, he was a bit of a nice guy. Uh, but yeah, he, I think you know he, he runs, you know, quite a type shit with his, you know, with like his friends and like he, he run runs it. Um, he's quite a, well. He was known as a bit of a drug dealer as well. Um, I think he did a few moves, you know, to get money and stuff like that. Bit of a naughty guy, Action. I'd say. Yeah, bit of a naughty chap. Cut. Fuck it, save me, you fuck cunt! Don't fucking save me, I'll play your fucking hell! Get back to the back! Fucking save me! It's in the back! Fuck! Cut. 
Yeah. There are certain scenes where I'm a bit of a normal, you know, quite normal, not really evil, but there are certain scenes where I want to portray him being, you know, a bit of a hard geezer, because he was, you know, he was a bit of a boxer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I portray him, I think, in a good light. Not too bad, but I, I do get a little bit dark with him. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. Sam Strike was fantastic to work with again. Um, the entire process with the actors, one of the things I wanted to bring in as a director was getting rehearsals in, um, which you don't often get on, on films, low budget independent films like this. Um, so it was wonderful to see actors flourish in that environment. And Sam, definitely, the, the character Dean Boschel that he's bringing to life, um, we often, both of us said he reminded us of, reminded us both of um, Private Piles from Full Metal Jacket, the character that just gets bullied and bullied and bullied until he snaps. Um, and th there's a little part of that journey that is Dean Boschel's journey, and Sam was really sensitive towards that. Yeah, I'm Sam Strike, playing Dean Boschel. He's one of the more, uh, I think he's one of the more timid characters in the film. I suppose his arc is like, he's just trying to, he's trying to run with the big boys and half succeeding, half failing at the same time. It doesn't end up very well for him. Cheers, Laura, thank you. My name is Naomi Willow, and my character name is Carla Michaels. Carla Michaels, she is um, quite a naughty character. She's sleeping with Dean Bochel, and um, she ends up setting up a um, like a robbery. Basically, I just shot a, a sex scene um, in a car. Um, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, it was actually quite funny. It was chilly. Yeah, that's it. Right. That's that's right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Three, two, one, action. Fucking hell! Ah! Fuck! Right, okay, don't, right, don't break anything. We're just... Fucking nasty. Do you know what? I just, I just, felt, I did. I just felt it flop down like that. He just thought, fuck. That's, that's revolting. Isn't it? <laughs> look, do you think that? That's your bone. Action! Ah! Chop! So we had Chris Ellison returning from the first film, which was great to see him work and great to be able to get him working with younger actors like Sam Strike and, and seeing those guys work together. Well, we just shot some scenes. I've been interviewing the various people who are suspects, the people we're after. I'm basically, my character is after this character, Percival, who he wants to see banged up for as long as possible. Um, I, I came in at the end of Bonded by Blood 1, chasing the last lot, and now I'm on to this, the new generation. Yeah, so the prison was one of the most difficult locations for us to find. Um, there are a number of prisons which you can rent out to film with, but unfortunately most of them are owned by the prison services, and if you're depicting a riot or a stabbing, they're not so keen on you using it. And in our film, we have both. So we found that quite difficult, um, and then we were recommended, I believe it was from Sasha Bennett, the director of the first film, had recommended he'd used a, a site called Latchmere House, which is an old prison in leafy Richmond, um, not far from Kingston-upon-Thames, where it is just left derelict, and it's owned by a private company who want to knock it down and build on it, but still don't have um, the rights to build there. But there was no electricity, and there was pigeon shit everywhere, and I mean everywhere. So it was, we had to try and clean the prison, which meant that the prison was then wet 
and still had pigeon shit everywhere. We had no electricity, so we had generators. So it was a, a grueling place to work, but it looked beautiful. It looked just like the kind of prison we wanted, which was decaying um, and falling apart, and it, it definitely filled that. Because the locations really are characters, um, and when you make a film on low budgets, you need really interesting locations. So it was beautiful. It looks great on the film. It was a nightmare to film there, but as long as the end product looks good. Yeah, Greg's great, man. Um, he's really hands-on from like the, the lead to, to someone right at the sort of bottom of the cast list. He gives everyone a, like a, a, a decent amount of attention and he's very hands-on. Um, he cares about what he's doing, which is really good. No, Greg's great, man. Greg's a, Greg's a solid director. Like, expect big things from him, I think. Greg's amazing. It's really refreshing to have him on set and, um, you know, he knows exactly what he wants. He walks around with what he calls, you know, the Bible, which is his, his shot list, you know. Nothing left, nothing left to chance, you know, he's, he's, he's utterly prepared. Greg is wicked. Um, just such a nice guy. He's got a really good vision. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he's just so good, you know, like if you don't like something, he's good to talk to, maybe change things and for the better. Goodbye from me, D.I. Trent, bonded by blood too. If people wanted to see a Bonded by Blood 3, I'd love to do one, and we've got a great idea for it. Um, so tell your friends to buy this. Oh, wow. Enjoy that. Why don't you see my one? Fucking shoot everyone in the room. <laughs> <laughs>